If you're a filmmaker, you've surely heard of or seen anamorphic lenses. The GOAT lenses of the filmmaking world, known specifically for that widescreen look, some distortion, and specifically flares, these bad boys are used all over Hollywood. The only problem for me and you is that they are very expensive. So, Moment made these. Also, you've probably seen the teasers by now, something that we're working on behind the scenes. We can't quite tell you yet, but the announcement is coming soon, and just trust us, it's gonna be awesome. Dude, what's up, bro? Yo. Just say hi to the subs. Sup, subs? <laughs> Who are the subs? <laughs> That's a really... <laughs> a really good question. Okay, let's dive into how these filters work. Now, this isn't going to replace an anamorphic lens, but it's $80. You're not gonna get the widescreen look, the distortion, but you are gonna get the flare, which is arguably the most noticeable trait of an anamorphic lens. Because you're not inherently getting that widescreen look, something you can do to sell the effect a little more is just to work in a sequence that is an aspect ratio of a traditional anamorphic lens so that the flare is more believable. And don't lie, we've all done the black bars, PNG vibe. You know, you know that's true. I'd consider myself, um, you know, a hack it together type of filmmaker who likes to do things fast and efficiently. And a big goal on a lot of my shoots is to kind of oversell the production value. I want it to look like our shoot that just had me and maybe a handful of other people looked like it had a big budget with a big crew and a lot of resources. When in reality, a lot of the times it's just me. This filter is one of those tools that will help you do that. It screws right onto your lens, so make sure you get the right thread size or use a step up ring. It has a bunch of lines in the filter to give you the effect and make the light bend, which gives you the flare. Just make sure that the filter is set directly upright. The filter actually rotates, so in case when you're screwing it on, it's not perfectly lined up, you can rotate the filter to then get the flares in the right spot. If you wanna accurately replicate an anamorphic lens, the flares should go horizontally across, but if you wanna get a little creative, you can make them go any direction you want. And then you point it at some light and let it rip. Hey, hey babe. Okay, some quick tech specs about the filter. It's a nice high quality glass. It's hydrophobic, which means if any water hits it, it's actually gonna spread off of the filter uh, and it's anti-scratch. You can also stack the street filter on top of the cine bloom, which is actually what I did to shoot a majority of the B-roll for this video. There's two different versions of this filter, each with a different color. There's gold and blue. Gold is mainly for warmer environments. I find myself shooting with gold more often, but blue is gonna be the best for anything that's nighttime, anything that you kinda want a cooler look, especially for that like that sci-fi look that you see a lot, blue is gonna be the way to go. Right now my wife is severely judging me in my career path. Okay, now let's go over some best practices for how to get the most out of your Cine Streak Flare filter. The sharper, more concentrated the light, the more noticeable the flare is going to be, while the more dull or diffused the light is, the less noticeable. The color of the light will also have an effect on the color of the flare, and if there is a ton of reflecting light or a ton of lights in your shot, then all of those will see a flare off of them. I wouldn't use it on every project, but a big part of filmmaking is having an array of tools in a toolkit to pull from for different kinds of shoots. If you're shooting a short film and you're shooting it at night and you want this look, then this is a much cheaper option than buying big, bulky, expensive anamorphic lenses. Best of all, this levels up your production value without breaking your bank account. Also, if you're a photographer, this is pretty interesting because if you're looking to capture more cinematic photos, you can use this filter as well. So though this is geared toward filmmakers, photographers, it's the same practice, just you're hitting a shutter button versus hitting that record button. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for being a part of the Moment family. We appreciate it so much and we are so excited to announce all of our news that we have behind the scenes and bring you guys along with us. So thanks for watching subscribe, like, all of that good stuff, and we'll see you here in a week or two with that big announcement.
Thanks, y'all. Peace. <laughs>